It all started with the brother of the father of Egyptology, Jacques-Joseph Champollion Fijac, who argues against ancient Egypt being black in a book called Egypte Ancienne. In English, that would be Ancient Egypt. Champollion Fijac opposed this view despite the conclusion his brother, the father of Egyptology, reached after examining several ancient Egyptian monuments in Egypt, that is, that the Egyptians were akin to the modern Ethiopians and other Africans further south. Nonetheless, without having set foot in Egypt himself, Champollion Fijac simply opposed his brother's view and the consensus by presenting quite the questionable argument. Here is how he argues. The opinion that the ancient population of Egypt belonged to the Negro African race is an error long accepted as truth since the Renaissance. Travelers in the East, barely capable of fully appreciating the ideas provided by ancient Egyptian monuments on this important question, have helped to spread that false notion, and geographers have not failed to reproduce it even in our day. A serious authority declared himself in favor of this view and popularized the error. Such was the effect of what the celebrated Volney published on the various races of men that he had observed in Egypt. He concludes that the Egyptians were true Negroes of the same species as all indigenous Africans. To support his opinion, Volney invokes that of Herodotus, who, apropos the Colchians, recalls that the Egyptians had black skin and woolly hair. Yet these two physical qualities do not suffice to characterize the Negro race, and Volney's conclusion as to the Negro origin of the ancient Egyptian civilization is evidently forced and inadmissible. So here is a guy who hasn't actually been to Egypt refuting what experts on the Orient said about what they had thoroughly examined. Wow. I mean, this man here didn't actually examine the same monument. He claims others were not fully able to appreciate the audacity. <laughs> it's incredible. This includes his brother and the Count de Volney, whom Champollion Fijac claims was a serious authority on this subject. This man even goes as far as to say that black skin and woolly hair are not sufficient descriptors for black people. <laughs> okay, this is ridiculous. For this dude, you could be black from head to toe, and he would still not call you black if you were from ancient Egypt. The man is obviously repulsed by the idea that black people would have been at the origin of the greatest ancient civilization ever. Remember, this is the imperial European era. Things like the Code Noir were in vigor in France. The Code Noir was a set of laws that considered black people as property or an object that can feel no pain, less than chattel. But it's that era. Go do your research on the Code Noir, instituted by Napoleon Bonaparte. Really, really evil stuff. Anyhow, all this to say that this man, Champollion, was adherent to the great and superior white race nonsense. Anyhow, let's continue to read his argumentation to see what he means by black skin and woolly hair are not sufficient descriptors for black people. It is recognized today that the inhabitants of Africa belong to three races, quite distinct from each other for all time. 1. Negroes proper in Central and West Africa. 2. Kafirs on the East Coast who have a less obtuse facial angle than blacks and a high nose, thick lips and woolly hair. 3. Moors, similar in stature, physiognomy and hair to the best formed nations of Europe and Western Asia and differing only in skin color which is done by the climate. The ancient population of Egypt belongs to this latter race, that is, to the white race. To be convinced of this, we need only examine the human figures representing Egyptians on the monuments and above all the great number of mummies that have been opened except for the color of the skin, blackened by the hot climates. They are the same men as those of Europe and Western Asia. Frizzy woolly hair is the true characteristic of the Negro race. The Egyptian, however, had long hair, identical with that of the white race of the West. Best formed nations of Europe. Wow, dude. Okay, we can tell what, <laughs> what he believed, right? So it, it supports my previous idea about him believing that white people were better. <laughs> I told you that these were interesting arguments. Three races that have always been different because of the climate. Do you now understand what he meant by black skin and woolly hair are not sufficient to characterize black people? To this dude, blacks are only West Africans and Bantu people. The others are not black. To him, we are completely unrelated, both phenotypically and genetically. Well, of course, that is all complete nonsense. 
That view is simply false and it has been proven so. Mind you, this view is still present today with some Egyptologists. They say the Egyptians weren't true blacks, meaning what Champollion just said. Lastly, this man Champollion Fijac ends up contradicting his own previous statement about the characteristics of black people when he says that breezy woolly hair is the true characteristic of black people. <laughs> the true characteristic of black people. So at one point it isn't and then it is again. I mean this man is hilarious. And he even concludes that Egyptians were white people. Yeah, white people with black skin. <laughs> Fairy tale. Like, share and comment. Peace.